Do you think it's going to go well with the Jews in the United States or anywhere else in the world? When they're trying to pass even Sharia law in the United States? I mean, come on, wake up! You know, people need to wake up what's going on. My brothers in Israel, you need to wake up. Erev Tov Harim. Uh, good evening, my friends, and another night for Israel Live. A uh, lot of breaking news is taking place in Israel. A lot of things that, that are that are affecting the prophetic uh, landscape. Uh, one article in particular, and this maybe really kind of disturbs me: the Haredim threaten mass exodus from Israel if draft law passes. Uh, there's the Israeli government is is working on doing a, a, a draft law that would. Include uh, the, the the Levitical community into fighting in the battles, and from the traditional teachings that Moses brought uh, in the laws there, the Levites were always uh, for the ministry, and they did not get involved in fighting, with the exception of one particular battle, and that was the Midianites. And uh, it, it, this concerns me that the that the that the um, Hasidic community in Israel, uh, the particular one, the Haradim. Would be be willing to walk out of Israel on this grounds here. Let me just share this with you, my brethren. If you happen to listen to this video, the Midianite battle, according to Rashi, was 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 fought with the Levites included. Now, uh, Rabbi Minachem, Minachem, excuse me, of the Chabad organization, wrote in his commentaries that. He believed that the reason why this battle was done was because God had the battle of the, uh, of the, of the Midianites that was fought was more for God's revenge. And so therefore the Levites participated in this, in this battle. Now if we take that is, is the plumb line of why um, God had commanded uh, uh, the children of Israel to bring up even from the Levites a certain number of men that would fight in the battle, then we should be willing I'm not a Levite myself. I mean, my ancestry would come from the tribe of Ephraim uh, through Joshua's line. But the thing is, is uh, on my father's side, that is. But the problem is, if 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 Rashi uh, had written about the fact that you know, it brings out the point there that that the Jews were fighting the Midianites, the Levites were involved in that for well, actually, Rabbi Menachem brings this out that it was for the revenge, and this is the reason why it was justifiable for the Levites to fight, even more so today then, should we be willing to participate. We shouldn't have to be drafted in this case here. If we need to fight, this is the time that God has promised to avenge himself upon our enemies. So it's the most honorable time, the most honorable time as Jews that we could ever fight in any battle. And it would be a privilege and an honor to be able to fight alongside with the IDF and be a part of that battle. I know many, many Christian people would be honored to be able to fight with the Israeli people as well in that. Okay, another note, uh, let me uh, bring to your attention as well. Uh, we have uh, another major issue here, and, and this really uh, is worth bringing to the attention. In the Ukraine, we know that the Ukraine has, has been, uh, that Russia has invaded uh, on the southern one of the southern peninsulas there in the Ukraine. Um, but normally I don't get too much into the into news as that is what we would consider away from Israel. But in this case here, it is important. This affects the Jewish people there. Uh, it is just like back during World War II. Uh, in fact, uh, the death toll from 1932 to uh, 1933, uh, famine in Ukraine has been estimated at six million to seven million, according to the Soviet author before. They died, people often lost their senses and ceased to be human beings. Yet one of the Stalin's lieutenants in Ukraine stated in 1933 that the famine was a, was a great success. You have to understand, there, there is so much hatred toward the Jewish people. And uh, uh, bring out another point here. One of uh, Ukraine's chief rabbis, Moshe Ruvin uh, uh, Asman, urged Jews to leave the capital city of Kiev following a reported anti-Semitic attack on two Chabad Yeshiva students in the city Last month, Israeli da Daily uh, Ma'ariv Ma reported, I told my community, this is what he says here, uh, to get out of the city if possible, out of the state. There are many warnings about planned attacks against Jews, Jewish institutions, 
Asman said, adding, Rabbi Asman that is, said, adding, we have been told by the Israeli embassy to, uh, uh, to not go outside, talking about outside of their homes. Uh, now, I bring this up because what we're finding is that when there is civil unrest in a nation, that's when the evil begins to come out. That's when those that, that have harbored the anti-Semitism uh, inside of their souls really becomes into play. Don't think it's not coming to the United States. It's coming here. It's coming soon. And you got to be ready for it. It's not going to be pretty, friends. It's not going to be pretty, my Jewish brothers and sisters. Go home to Israel. I know that our country is besieged. I know that the two-state solution is going to be signed. I know that these things are going to happen and our country is going to be ripped in half. Better to be in our homeland where God will fight for his people than to be abroad and to be slaughtered in the, in the upcoming Holocaust events that will happen in the United States and around the world. If you can go home, go home. As Christian people, if there's anything you can do to help Jews get home, do it. Be a part of it. Be a part of something. It's what God has called you for. In fact, we're coming up on Yom Purim. Yom Purim this month uh, happens, uh, starts March 15th and 16th is the dates that will fall. It's a one-day event. This is when Esther takes and stands, uh, that, that throws herself in the breach for the children of Israel. And... This is the time that we must act. This is the time we must do something before that Holocaust takes place once again. Anyway, tonight is Shabbat. We are uh, at the Sabbath. I normally don't do a newscast on uh, Shabbat, but I wanted to bring this to you. Also to let you know, Shabbat Live. I'll be on with uh, Brother Jason Egroff. He's the host of that program there. Uh, we come on as guests with John B. Wells from Coast to Coast, former host Coast to Coast, now the host and... Uh, uh, um, well, he's the main boss of Caravan to Midnight, founder of Caravan to Midnight. John B. Wells will be on with us tonight. Uh, interesting show, no doubt. Hope you sure, Surely you won't want to miss it. Uh, and we'll be talking about a lot of things, no doubt. I, I just kind of leave the whole platform open. So God bless you. Baruch Hashem. Blessed is the coming. And for many of us, it's the second coming. But for the Jews, for the house of Israel, it's his first coming. God bless you. And good night.